various stages of sleep. That's a great question. So the question is sometimes you can sleep a little bit long perhaps, yeah. and you wake up and you're actually tired. Yeah. Good, that's a wonderful question. We'll address that in a minute, and we'll also address it because the same thing can happen when you nap. Ever happen where you start to take a nap so you can get refreshed, and you wake up and you're like, oh my God, and you're like so drugged? Yeah. Based on what I just said, based on these stages of sleep, when do you think in those stages, and I'll be happy to run through what happens during them, you might have, what might have been going on when you woke up groggy from your, what appeared to be a full sleep, the, 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 the deep, yeah, the, the deep, deep, sleep, yeah, the deep sleep, which is stage three, right. Yeah. What happens is, is we cycle through this all night long. It takes about 90 to 100 minutes, hour and a half or so, to cycle from stage one through REM. And then once we do stage one once, we don't do it again. During the course of a, a, of a night, and a nap for that matter, we're going through these repeatedly. So REM sleep, for example, which is so important for, we believe, consolidated memory, part of that maybe that decompression, certainly level three, the deep wave sleep is the, the slow wave sleep. The deep sleep is very important for that restoration and that, cons that compression, decompression. That we have these multiple opportunities. First it's REM for a little bit, then the next time we come around to REM again, it's a little bit more, then we come around again a little bit more. We might have five periods of REM sleep that increases over the course of the night that we're sleeping. And each one of those carries with it an opportunity for something to happen. Same thing with the deep stage three sleep. Something's happening in terms of the restoration and the repair in our body as we go through it. So into being interrupted from it has its consequences and being able to go through it. But if we, for example, have it where you've gone through and you've gone through your REM sleep and then you're back with say the two sleep, stage two, which is sort of where you're ideally want to wake up. We want to wake up with that's stage two, but you go a little bit further because it's just gonna cycle into stage three. Now you're back in the deep sleep. The alarm goes off, because you probably wouldn't naturally wake up at that time because it would be such a deep sleep. And you're like, oh, I'm so exhausted. A little bit longer, you'd have been out of it. A little bit before, you'd have been before. Um, but you may have woken up right in it, and that's what we'll talk about when we talk about napping. You wanna take a little bit of a nap. It's gonna cycle from level one, stage one, for a little bit, maybe 10 minutes at the most. Then stage two. That might be a good time to wake up. Then stage three, not such a good time to wake up. Then some REM sleep, if you can get that far through it in the middle of the day after studying in the morning or learning information, that could be absolutely terrific because there's this REM window to really take advantage of that stuff, right? And then coming back around. So how can we time the naps?